Seismic Trap is one of the most popular and one of the most powerful builds in Path of Exile Dirge League. It's also one which I suspect will be nerfed going into 317. However, like many powerful builds that have multiple scaling vectors, it's probably going to survive those nerfs. It's probably going to be one of the best boss killers in 317. So whether you're playing it now, or if you find this video in the future, I feel like it's very important for people to know the mechanics of Seismic Trap, how it works, and how you scale it especially given the fact that the skill description is about as clear as mud. Now, if you care less about how your skills work, and you care more about the items that I'm wearing right now, or the items that anyone would be wearing while playing the skill, then do stay tuned for that, as I'm going to be making a build showcase for this character. And I'm going to talk a lot more about general gearing for Seismic Trap in that video. But to change any of the gear from what I'm using on my character, to adapt to what you're using and you need for your character, you're going to need to know how the skill works. So be sure to leave a like on the video, sub to the channel, and ring the bell so that you can see when I upload that. For now though, if you're going to be playing Seismic Trap, and you're not going to be wearing the exact same gear that I'm wearing, or whoever else whose build guide you're following is wearing, you're going to need to know how the skill works so you know which things you can change and which things you can't. When you throw a Seismic Trap, it will arm itself then after a delay, it'll trigger, releasing those waves that you see, which look like little explosions dancing around me like a disco of death. By default, there's going to be five explosions. With a helmet enchant, there's going to be six, which means the helmet enchant is about a 20% more multiplier to your DPS. But don't worry, we're just getting started when it comes to talking about more multipliers. If you want to scale Seismic Trap on a budget, you can also increase the duration over which it's going to deal damage. This isn't done by trap duration. This is done by skill effect duration. Trap duration, as it turns out, is the amount of time the trap itself sits on the ground before automatically exploding and activating. So what this means is taking nodes like exceptional performance with the duration mastery for 10% more skill effect duration is really good. But on the other hand, having reduced trap duration, such as on the set and forget notable, is also really good. Set and forget will mean that your trap is going to trigger much faster without an enemy having to come into the trigger radius and actually step on it. So a TLDR for this section is you want skill effect duration, and as much of it as possible, at least if you're in low gear, to increase the amount of time the seismic trap sticks around, dealing damage. But you want as low a trap duration as possible, so that the trap will be thrown, arm, and go off as quickly as possible. I could be remembering wrong on this next part, so don't quote me here but I believe that the arming time does still scale off of your cast speed, which means that even though all of the other aspects scale off of trap throwing speed, this aspect that's off of cast speed might take a little bit longer and will add a little bit of a delay to your damage no matter what you do. But speaking of trap throwing speed, the more trap throwing speed you have, the faster it will release waves, thus increasing the damage and also making the skill feel a lot better. By default, it's going to release a wave every 0.9 seconds. Those are those explodey earthquake pulses that you kept seeing earlier. But for example, on my character, it releases a wave every 0.5 seconds, which is significantly faster, and it means that I'm going to be dealing almost double the damage of a default seismic trap just due to wave frequency alone. So this is another way to scale your damage that also scales the quality of life quite significantly. Finally, trap cooldown recovery speed also scales the damage, because it means you're able to throw more traps at a given time. Especially if their duration exceeds their cooldown, you'll have multiple traps up all the time, which means more dead bosses. It's also quite helpful for when you throw out all your traps, and then the boss decides to move or teleport away right where you threw them while they're arming, which means they're doing nothing and you need them back as soon as possible. I'd actually rate cooldown recovery speed, and also trap throwing speed, both above things like damage, crit chance, crit damage. Because not only do they increase the damage you deal, or at least your DPS, but they also increase the quality of life so the skill feels better and the build plays better. Now, I know that I said finally just a minute ago, but because Seismic Trap has so many methods of scaling damage, I almost forgot one. The same one that I see that most players playing the skill also seem to have forgotten. That is Area of Effect. Area of Effect scales your Seismic Trap by allowing more of the explosions to overlap more consistently especially if you're not perfect about placing it dead center on that boss, or if a boss starts moving because they're deciding to charge you. You'll want to aim for at least 220%, or a radius of 26. For full overlaps, you'll want at least 270%, or a radius of 29. 
This is the main thing that I see so many seismic trap builds doing wrong, and it's something that can cost you a massive amount of DPS. At the start of a video, I mentioned the helm enchant was about 20% more DPS, but assuming that you get all of the overlaps at 270% versus only having a couple down below 220, area of effect is a 50 to 100% more multiplier on your damage. This will of course vary depending on the size of the enemy and how good you are at throwing your traps accurately, but the smaller the enemy and the worse you are at throwing traps, the better AoE becomes. So even if you're like, but I'm a bad player, this can't help me, no, this can help you even more if you feel like you're a bad player. Hopefully you have a little bit better of an understanding of how Seismic Trap works. I know it's complicated and there's a lot of mechanics, so I've broken this video down into sections and, and you should feel free to review them whenever one becomes relevant if you have a question in the future. But now to try to sum things up, you want the plus one wave enchant on your helmet. Increased duration is a decent second choice, especially if you're undergeared. While you're undergeared, focus on skill effect duration because it'll increase your overall DPS output but as you do more and more damage per trap, this will become less important and you can honestly forego it entirely when you're fully geared. Less trap duration is great quality of life because it makes your traps more immediate. You could use a sun blast at low levels or set and forget clusters later. Trap throwing speed and cooldown recovery speed greatly increase your quality of life while also scaling your damage and they're great things to prioritize at any level of gearing. Finally, get at least 220% AOE or a radius of 26 on your seismic trap. This will help you maximize your overlaps, and as you improve your gear, aim for 270% or a radius of 29. Don't be afraid to use a carcass jack or awaken increased area of effect support. These things might not increase your tooltip, but they will massively increase your single target damage, as this is one of the largest damage multipliers that you can get from a skill. From there, focus on defenses and quality of life. The build should do more than enough damage to already kill everything in the game, which means your main goal should be to stay alive no matter what and have the best experience possible. And if you've ever gone into a build not really understanding how the skill worked and ending up having a bad time or finding out that there's something about one of the mechanics of your skill that works completely the opposite of how you thought. Maybe you went into a skill fully understanding it because you've played it before and then you play it again and again and again because it becomes a comfortable favorite. What are some of your comfortable favorite skills? And what are some of the skills that you've had the worst experiences with because you went into them without fully understanding how all the mechanics worked. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you and have a great day.